Hello goons, I am Evil Tim and this is Let's Play Castlevania 64. Today on Let's Play Castlevania 64 we're going to play Castlevania Legacy of Darkness and firstly we will be pre presented with a choice. Do we wish the game to be even remotely playable? No. Yes. Let's go for yes. High res is unplayable as in every other N64 game. Meanwhile a woman is being chased through the forest by a POV shot. Oh my fucking god. Oh god I haven't even done my hair. You can't kidnap me. Yes I can. And I can turn the screen red too and summon the title screen. That is one damn good POV shot. Okay so here we go with his logo and bang away. Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. The moon is still that up. Horrible Molly Satsuma, but Malice has been banished, no more of his violinery. <laughs> Alright, so we're going with a new vial, or normal, and we can only choose Cornell at the moment, we have to earn everyone else. That's Henry on the other end, the other two you know already. And it would seem that the Necronomicon's cover has been replaced with a fucking paving slab. Here we go. Clunk. Jesus Christ. That is some mean bookbinding. And firstly, we get this sort of pretentious intro thing, which will work. You know, the graphics are really worth looking at this close up. This is Gilles de Rice, who is walking along here. That's how you pronounce it, in case you're wondering. It's not Gilles, you foolish humans. So, Casey Kobe. And we're going to walk up. Despite the fact that there is a staircase with stairs, they're going to draw our, our attention to the fact that this is not it. So, we are going to walk slowly through the various parts of Castle Center. This will taunt us for Castle Center because Cornell doesn't get to do it at all. Although, given this game, uh, that's not a bad thing, because virtually everything is extended by 50% or more. Uh, you will see that in Castle Wall, it's ridiculous. We've got some extra armors thrown in here to make it look more spectacular. Ooh, we're here with it's very, very, very good, isn't it? And right about now, Gilles de Rice is going to use his power to walk out of a wall, if you remember the layout of this um, section here. There is a wall where we just came out of, and these Goron heads, which are apparently switched off when no one's looking. And I'm going to shut up now due to a very silly joke that I decided to butt in here. Centuries to a dreadful dynasty of vicious vampire ducks, the Counts of Ducula. Legend has it that these foul beings can be destroyed by a snake through the heart or exposure to sunlight. This does not suffice, however, for they may be brought back to life by means of a secret rite that can be performed once a century when the moon is in the eighth house of Unwary. Blood. Are you getting? Death doesn't know it yet, but we've replaced his regular evil ritual sacraments with new Folgers crystals. Let's see what happens. Yes, for some reason this is the introduction to Castlevania Rondo of Blood. I guess they figured they could rip it off because there's no documented evidence that anyone's ever played that. And so she gets it again, poor girl, and once again, completely fucking vanishes so that the lid of the coffin can fly off ridiculously. Wee, off it goes. I hope he's going to pick that up, the bastard. And up comes the fake Dracula. There he is. You wasted a perfectly good human sacrifice on a fake Dracula? What the fuck, Atrice? Jesus! And now he's caught fire, what the hell? God damn it, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna leave you two here and I'm gonna go and set fire to a village. Call me on my cell phone if anything comes up. And he has indeed set fire to a village. The village is on fire, due to fire. We need several camera pans to emphasize this fact, just in case, you know, you thought that only two buildings of it were. And that guy's dead, and polyagonal, and possibly a frog. This guy, however, has been dead significantly longer and doesn't see what he's got to brag about, so he's going to throw his skeleton molotovs around. Meanwhile, a pair of legs are coming to rescue them, and that is the most awesome skeleton in all of Castlevania. It's not enough that the building's on fire, he's going to beat the fucking thing to death. Go, mullet man, you've got to stop the skeletons. Quickly, they've only set fire to the whole village. Go on, Cornell. If you beat up these skeletons, then you won't have to tell anyone you left the gas on. Maybe they won't ask. Yes, not referencing anything. Okay, so he runs back to his house here, which looks like all the other houses, only plainer. You know, usually they look less plain, but um, he, he actually left his polygons in the roof space and they've fallen out now. He's taken aback by that horror. And he looks down here and realizes that uh, actually you, he, Link didn't have to get straddled by a weird fish girl in order to get hold of this thing, because, you know, you just had to pick it up. Link? Why did you get straddled by the weird fish girl if you didn't have to? <laughs> yeah, about that. Okay, so now we get a cloud of words ejected in our general direction. This is Cornell's introduction. Cornell, also known as Blue Crescent Moon. Through magic of the ancients, 
this man-beast warrior obtained a physical body of near immortality and a power that surpasses that of a wild beast. The man-beasts, choosing to live harmoniously with humans, sealed away their enormous magical powers to prevent them from being used. However, through severe ascetic training, Cornell acquired the art for releasing the sealed man-wolf power. After a year of traveling and ascetic training, Cornell rushed back to his village, only to find that evil spirits had set the village on fire, engulfing the village in a lotus flower of flames. Not to be confused with the rose blossom of pretentious metaphors. His only living blood relative, his sister Ada, was carried away by the evil spirits. Now, he must save her. Cornell uses the man-wolf's acute sense of smell to track the scent of his sister's blood. Good idea with a prepubescent girl who isn't injured. Reinhard Schneider. Carrie Fernandez. We go back eight years in time, before the period in which these two young warriors risked their lives battling against the devil. Now, the truth that has been shrouded in the gloom of darkness will be revealed. Of course, we never knew there was a truth shrouded in the gloom of darkness, but we're going to reveal it anyway. Meanwhile, it's Charon! Hooray! So, why are you here, Charon, in this lake in the middle of Romania? Oh, I thought that whole river sticks thing was yeah, just getting to me a bit. I felt like a bit of a change. Oh, I see. And, uh, you know, I like the fares that the customers give me. It's always nice when they do. Wait. Why are you looking at that two-dimensional anchor chain? Oh, no reason. Just go a little closer. Okay. Hey! You can't climb that! It doesn't exist in the third dimension. There's nothing for you to grab. Oh, fuck. Damn you! Damn you, two-dimensional anchor chains in an inexplicable galleon in the middle of a lake! I lose more fares that way. Okay, here we are. We are Cornell. We can do this. We can hit things with our claw attack thing. We are a spindly dosbot made out of triangles. And we have hair that looks like a crash helmet. He is from a Hasselhoff school of werewolves. Terrible thing. Oh, no, wait. He is not a werewolf. He is a man beast. The difference is, of course, that he doesn't have to turn into a wolf when it has a full moon. He can throw whatever the fuck that is. Here it is. Look, it's a blue thing. If anyone can actually explain what that is, feel free, but uh, I can't, and I don't think you can either. That's a fish man. A fish man is model swap of the lizard man. Makes the same sounds. Has pretty much the same attacks. Uh, they can swim around underwater, and it's actually depicted now. Uh, a little better than it was before, and at the moment I don't think their spit attack poisons you and most of them can't do it. Alright, so we're going to smash some stuff, we're going to get ourselves a knife. Now you notice there's now a 1 by the knife, that is the new power-up system, which you will see later on in more detail. Essentially, picking up the same item over and over makes it more powerful. Ooh, it's great. You, die. Enough of your ways. Man, man. You can't threaten me with your pelvic thrusts, I'm a man too. You are? Hey! Oh, it's maybe a spindly, effeminate anime protagonist, but I don't have to take that shit from you. I've already killed you. Why am I even talking to you anymore? Jump on that box, you. Okay, so he's up on the box and got our first save gem. Now, uh, Foggy Lake here, this galleon, is essentially just a jumping tutorial. There is no horrible holes here. Uh, overall, Legacy of Darkness is a hell of a lot easier than Castlevania 64 was, mainly because they fixed a lot of the uh, more horrendous jumping puzzles. For example, in Tower of Science, rather than being essentially random, the uh, electric spark things um, turn on and off with a fairly nice window to them, and I've fallen off a blank. Oh no, no, it's a crate, it's not a blank. That nonsense. There's a ghost here. He's going to try and menace us, but we're going to menace him right back, and we're going to be much, much more successful at it. So we pick up some gold, and then we have uh, to return a mast. 